the importance of Harinam and Diksha in other language words second initiation but not initiation Diksha is one Harinam is first first Harinam should be given and then Diksha Without Harinam, Diksha did not be given. To clear, to remove all the anath, all Diksha moves. Name is prominent, very Shakti Shal, powerful. Diksha is also of two kinds. Vidva Darud Vipti and Abhidva Dhanudva. A big diksha in the real sense that gives real relationship to Krishna. A special kind of relation with Krishna. This is really diksha. And secondly, that diksha will take away all your endless pain of birth and death and all one great thing. This is in real sense diksha. If it is done, then it will begin from test. Ruchi. And that will be Raganuga. And secondly, Abhidva Drudhubhitti. Only five sacrifices were done in that initiation and Jagya Kovit was given. But he was admitted in the school of Diksha, not fully Diksha, general. If you have taken Diksha like this, then don't think that I have received the Diksha, you are admitted only in the school of Diksha. And then you will have to follow the teachings of Srila Rupa Goswami. It is called nectar of instruction. If you are abiding, you cannot be a, a real devotee. Also, his teachings are divided into two. Into two. Some are to give up, give up, or someone to accept. accept. Those who are not favorably wish would strongly reject. So this has been told in two slopes first. And what should we do? It has been in, told in other slopes of Upadesha. So we should try to strictly follow all the teachings that Rupa Goswami has told. Otherwise you are not devotee. You are devotee. One thing all remember, one thing more remember that All the teachings 
talk to Bhattam. Or for Grihastha. Not from, for renounced order of Brahmachari and Sanyas. Why? In their family life, they have all done nothing to do, all these things. They have done already, completed this course, and they have passed and then they have left home. Raghunath Das Goswami, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, you can take an example. His ideal, his all life character is ideal. So, it is all grihastha, but now the sannyasi brahmachari are not so qualified. They should also follow from the way. Favorable, they should accept, very strong. Not favorable, what are they? First, it is very essential for grihasthas and all. Mali Sahajiya Sakhi Bheki they, they fear, so much fear, like Vajra. Thunderbolt. Thunderbolt. Utsaha, Nishaya, Dhariya, Tattat Karn Pravartana, Sangha Pyaga, Sato Bhakti, you should remember this law and try to follow with heart and soul. Shamran, explain. Vacha Vegam, Manasa Krauda Vegam, Jeeha Vegam, Udhra Pasta Vegam. Srila Rupa Goswami is teaching us the uh, initial principles for becoming a devotee. And this book, Nectar of Instruction, teaches us from the beginning to the end. End meaning living in Radha Kund and serving Radha and Krishna. But the beginning is Vacho Vegam Manasakroda Vegam. Vegam means pushing or urges. My mind is pushing to sing something, my stomach is pushing to eat something, my tongue is pushing to speak something or taste something. So Vacho Vegam. One should control the pushings of the words and only speak about the glorification of Krishna and his devotees, avoiding prajalpa, avoiding criticism. Vajra Manasa, one should control his mind and always think of Krishna, remember Krishna, never forget Krishna, and all rules and regulations follow these two. Manasa, Kroda, one should control his anger, and he does this by remembering tatenu kampam shushumishramanam, that nobody and no circumstance is the cause of my suffering. Only my own sinful and offensive activities are the cause of my suffering. And anger is the younger brother of lust. So because I have material desires and they're never fulfilled, just like trying to satisfy a fire by pouring fuel on it makes the fire only more raging. So because lust is never satisfied, anger follows. If I'm aware of these things, then I can try to control my anger. Manasakroda Vegam. Jiva, I should control my tongue and only eat those things that are offered to Krishna and also prepared by devotees. Because if I eat, not eat prasadam, because I can't eat Krishna, but honor prasadam. If I take foodstuffs offered and prepared by materialists, then my mind becomes wicked. As Bhishma Dev said, because I was eating the food of Duryodhana 
and family, my mind also became like a demon. So jiva vedam udara pasta vegam. And one should control our uh, belly, not eating too much, because there's a straight line between the tongue, the belly, and the genitals. If I overeat and my stomach gets overfull, I also won't be able to control my urge to enjoy uh, sensual opportunities with the opposite sex. And one who can control all these six pushings is qualified to be a guru and have made disciples all over the world. He's qualified to be Jagat Guru. Thank you. The second sloka in Sri Upadesamritam is telling us the six things which we should avoid. Atyahara Prajagastya Prajalpaniya Magraha Jnana Sangascha Lolamscha Sajbir Bhaktir Pinashyate. Those six activities which are described here, they will destroy pure bhakti for sure. The first thing, as we heard from Srimati Shavarani Dasi, Atyahara, to overeat or take more things as what you need, it will not, as that you can digest, yeah. then problems come. Atyahare prajarishtha, prajarishtha means to collect more things than you need, yeah. to over endeavor for mundane things. Prajalpa, prajalpa, we all know what is prajalpa, we are very much guilty yeah, if we are looking within our heart, how much time we waste every day talking about useless matters, yeah. forgetting that this life is so valuable and rare and what we can achieve in this life. As we grow older in this body, this body becomes older, we lament, oh, how much time I have wasted and still I am wasting. I wish I could get myself together to really become serious. I'm going to try again and again. So be very careful. Yeah? Always take advantage of good association when sadhus come to hear Harikata and discuss these topics with each other, asking questions. Niya Magraha, to follow the rules and regulations, to practice chanting, hearing, remembering everything, but be so attached to those rules and regulations that they Actually, they prohibit us to take advantage of good opportunities. There is nice class going on in the morning. Sadhus are coming. I have to chant my rounds, Prabhu. Uh, I cannot come. Yeah, I, I'm just now absorbed in chanting my rounds regularly. I should not come and hear Harikatha. So be very careful that we do not uh, fall in this um, mistake that we think, oh, I should avoid good opportunities. What is the best opportunity for making advancement in pure bhakti to here, to have sadhu sangha, to serve advanced Vaishnavas? Okay. Then chanting, everything will automatically come, taste will come, interest will come, and you will find that throughout the day you will be chanting and remembering. Niyamagra also means to be too easy yeah, to not take serious the hearing and chanting. I find any excuse that, oh, I have to earn some money, I have to look after so many things related to my body, my health, I have to sleep at least 10 hours because my body is very tired, I've been doing parikrama and I'm very tired. This is not proper, we should make good regulation that every day we make time for chanting, hearing, but in proper ways so that we take advantage of good opportunities. 
Niyamagram, Jnana Sangha. Very important to avoid the association with those who are not interested in pure bhakti. Who are those? Those who are interested in sense gratification. Yeah. Try to avoid, by all means, to take that association. Sometimes it is unavoidable in our daily activities. Krihastas who have to earn a livelihood to associate with those persons who are sense gratification interested in sense gratification, but what we do, don't take any interest in what they offer you. Yeah. Only as a routine we relate with them, but we are always fixed remembering what is the real goal of life, pure bhakti. Yeah. Then those who are interested in the impersonal aspect of God, who don't believe that God is a person, that we have a relationship with Him, they believe we merge in God, we are all Brahman, or all spirit, no need to worship any personal God. They are very, very dangerous for our progress in pure bhakti. By hearing from them, taking their association serious, we will lose the opportunity to develop in pure bhakti. Be very, very careful to not take this association serious. The last one, lolyam. Lolyam, yeah. that means that we have too much greed and interest for undertakings which are not favorable for pure bhakti. What are those undertakings? Outside in this material world we see so many things. How to earn money, how to start big, big projects. Even sometimes we think we have to start a big, big temple and Gurudev will be so pleased. But what we forget that Gurudev will be most pleased if there is a wonderful temple developing within our own heart. This is most important. If there is a temple within the heart, then whatever comes automatically outside, yeah, it will develop naturally. Yeah. So many good opportunities are there, but we're always taking care how to keep the temple within our heart very pure and a wonderful place where Gurudev, Vaishnavas, Radha, Krishna, Mahaprabhu, all his associates, they feel very happy there. So. If we don't avoid these six activities, our pure bhakti or endeavors to develop pure devotion will be destroyed. Text 3 of Sri Upadesh Amritya, Srila Rupa Goswami God has advised, Utsahan, Nischaya, Dharya, Tat Tat, Karma, Pravartanat, Asa Sangatyage, Sato Vrte, Satvir Bhaktir Prasidyati. Just as there are six uh, activities which are Vinasati, destroying Bhakti, there are six activities which will nourish and uh, help our Bhakti to grow into the next higher stages. Utsahan, uh, like an Utsava, a festival. This means you should be very. Uh, enthusiastic. Well, so many impediments because this material world is imperfect will try to stop you from uh, doing your bhakti. But you should always be enthusiastic and, and engaging in all the activities like it's a festival. Rising early, jumping up from bed, cleaning, running to the temple to see the deities from Mongol Arti. Uh, this is Utsahan. It's a festival uh, every day and never becoming uh, morose or unenthusiastic. Utsahan Nishchayad. Uh, having deep faith. This will come from hearing from the lips of uh, pure devotee. The one Shraddha will grow and grow. So one should hear with faith the uh, descriptions of bhakti from pure devotees. Daryat is a very, very important. A lot of devotees, uh, we hear from Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur, Ganda Tarala. They're hot and then they're cold. They're up, they're down. So we should be patient. Uh, while being enthusiastic, while having great faith, we must be patient. The fruit will come, but not immediately. Huh? Just like a, a girl cannot expect that immediately that she gets married, immediately she will have a child. It will take some time. She will have to please the husband. There will be so many things that will have to be done, and then gradually, eventually, some child will be coming. So similarly in devotional service, we will have to start at the beginning and uh, follow very carefully, especially these beginning instructions we are receiving from Srila Rupa Goswami Pad cannot jump immediately to the highest stage. Mm. Tat-tat-karma-pravartanat. 
but accepting uh, those activities that are favorable for bhakti. This is like mirroring the description of Sharanagati, Anukulyasya Sankalpa Pratikulyasya Varjanam. Huh? Accepting everything that is favorable for our bhakti and rejecting those things that are unfavorable. So we have to make these decisions every second. Uh, isn't it? Every second we have to decide, is this favorable or is this unfavorable? How uh, I'm responding to the environment. We can't control the environment. Now uh, that is a useless task. What is going on with the climate? What is going on with the politicians? What is going on with the taxes? What is going on with children? <laughs> Whatever. But we can control our response to what the environment is sending us. So we should be accepting those things that are favorable and being careful to reject which is unfavorable. Then finally, uh, last two, asat sangatyagi, just as it said, by association of uh, wicked persons. Sangatyagat satovrite. Sangatyagat means, just as it was said by association with asat sangis in the previous verse, your bhakti will go down. So by giving up the association of those who are worldly minded and attached to uh, material things, uh, who have all bad qualities, your bhakti will flourish. Conversely, you should associate with those who are also uh, trying to have these qualities of enthusiasm and patience and deep faith. Then, very easily, your bhakti will grow. And Satovrite, especially Bhakti Nautakur has commented for the householders, Satovrite means that one should adopt a livelihood which is honest and which is conducive to uh, not over-endeavoring or becoming entangled in um, the karma, bad karma activities. One should adopt a good livelihood. Satopite, and these six things will help your bhakti. Thank you. Yes, Bhuli Srivindavan Vihari Lal Ki Jai Jai Sri Rati Maitra Tu Radha Radha Drajiki gali ano me Maitra tu radha radha na Drajiki gali ano me Maitra ayo prindavan tham Kishori tere charan ano me Maitra ayo prindavan tham Kishori tere Bolo radhe 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 Hey, hey, hey. 
राधे 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 Thank <laughs> you. 
According to their statements, Kanisht as Kanisht, Madhyam as Madhyam, and Uttam as Uttam. Those who are taking chanting name, no Diksha, no heart. Respect with heart. Don't do pranam because they will be puffed up. Don't. But has. <coughs> That he has asat lakshana hi, no asat sangha, mayabad or istrishan. And those who have diksha, internal diksha, they should be given heartily pranam and also bodily. And those who don't criticize anyone, Always remember sweet pastimes, Sastakadi Lila of Krishna, or give your life and soul and serve them. If you have no taste in chanting, remembering, hearing, possibly you should do again and again. And then being in Vrindavan, in the guidance of Rasik Vaishnava Guru. Chanting name and realizing its meaning and the history that has been given in like Krishna, Govinda, all sweet pastimes are there. So 
So you should chant names and remember this Satsvi pastimes regarding that name. Ras Lila and everything will come in there. Being in Vrindavan, but in the guidance of pure Vaishnava, Guru Rashi, Tattvartya. This is the essence of all this. Can you give me an example for this? Yes. I select Raghunath Das Goswami. Perfect in all teachings that Rupa Goswami has to. And that is why he is called Rupa Nuga Vaishnava. He took birth in a very high class of wealthy and aristocratic uh, family. And from beginning, his school guru was related anyhow to Advaita Charjya Bhagavan. Yadunandan. And he was given initiation by and Harinam by Yadunandan. And after some time, he received the association of Thakur Haridas and always serving Haridas Thakur. And Sir Raghunath, uh, Haridas Thakur has always love and affection for him. So he was telling the stories of Mahaprabhu, the, to the stories of Radha and Krishna and all. So he faith, faith became more strong. And then he began to think how to reach to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and serve. He was the son of Lion Lord. He wanted that I should go. But there were so many. So after this, what? He can be yourself. You can be. Madhav Maharaj can come here. In the place of harmonium, you should take here. Om Jnana Salataya Time to time you will see. Chakshur Angulatam Jena Tasvai Sri Gurave Nama Srila Gurudev ordered me to narrate something of the life history of Srila Raghunath Das Goswami. When he was a young man, at that time, he wanted to run away from home and be with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Again and again he tried to run away, but his father sent so many men on horseback and they would catch him and bring him back into the home. And they would guard him to make sure he did not escape again. But by good fortune, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, when he was on his way to Vrindavan, he came to Shantipur and at that time Raghunath, the young Raghunath, he took permission from his father and he went and he visited and had darshan of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. At that time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu could see his heart and how eager he was to run away from home. But Mahaprabhu instructed him, Stirahau karijau nahau bhutu Krami krami pai loka bhava sindhu kool O Raghunath, you should make your mind very steady. Don't behave like a crazy fellow. You cannot cross, jump over the ocean of material existence. You have to follow the process very, very gradually. If one is patient and follows gradually, surely he can cross over the ocean of material existence. He told him, don't make an external display of renunciation. Market vairagya. That is called monkey renunciation. Don't be like monkeys. You know monkeys, they are very renounced. They have no house. They have no money. They have no clothes. Hmm? And they live in the forest. But what happens? All the time they're thinking about how to hmm, become attached to some female monkey. Or otherwise, if anyone is walking by, they sit very calm and quiet. And all of a sudden they pounce and they steal. So they're very greedy and they're very lusty on the 
inside, but outside they are very renounced. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, don't be renounced like this, only making a show on the outside for the sake of impressing others. Rather, yatha jogya vishay bonja anasaktahaya. Remain in the world and you can enjoy the uh, pleasures which come automatically according to a, an appropriate regulated life. But at the same time, don't develop any attachment for these things. How should you live? Antare kare nishta pashe loka vyavaha Krishna achevata krishna tomai kare be udha Mapu said, In the core of your heart you should develop nishta, very strong and firm faith in Krishna and the process of bhakti. But outwardly you should behave like an ordinary person. You should give respect to your mother and father. You should follow the regulations of society. Obey your mother and father. And if you behave like this, but internally cultivating nishta, Krishna will be very pleased with you. And after a short time, Achirata Krishna Tomei Karibe Uta, He will take you out of that situation. So, with these words of reassurance of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Sri Raghunath Das, he returned to his home and he behaved like a paka materialist. Mm -hmm. Very, very doing all of his duties, pleasing his mother and father and everything. They arranged his marriage also to a very beautiful lady, more beautiful than Miss Universe. And he began to help manage his father's estate. At that time, all became relaxed and thought, oh, now the, now the emergency is over. When he was younger, he wanted to be a sadhu, but now he's okay. He got over that phase in his life. But after some time, the uh, Raghunath Das, he heard that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu had returned to Jagannath Puri. And again he became very, very restless and wanted to meet with him. And he began to run away again. Then his father was and mother were very upset. They were very, very concerned. His mother said, what can we do? We should get some chains and chain him to the home so he cannot leave. His father said, oh, if this living chain in the form of his new bride, very beautiful wife, if this living chain cannot bind him, then what will be the use of the lifeless metal chains? They will never be able to bind him. No one can hold a person who has become maddened by Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So they began to become hopeless. After some time, Sri Nityananda Prabhu came very close to the town of Adisaptagram where Das Goswami was living. And he was there in Panihati, staying at, at the house of Raghav Pandit. And he was doing kirtan on the bank of the Ganga in the association of his, uh, all his associates. At that time, Raghunath Das begged permission from his father, please allow me to go and have the darshan of Sri Nityananda Prabhu. So his father gave permission, but he also sent so many guards along with him to make sure that he could not escape. So Raghunath Das came there to Panihati. And from far away, he saw Sri Nityananda Prabhu, more effulgent and beautiful than millions of moons, sitting beneath a banyan tree in the company of his associates. And from far, far away, he was giving his Dandavat Pranam. One associate of Nityananda Prabhu uh, 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 pointed out to, to him, Oh, Raghunath Das is giving Pranam to you from a distance. And Nityananda Prabhu, he got up and called, Hey, you thief, come here. I'll give you a punishment. And Nityananda Prabhu, he caught Raghunath Das and by force he kept his feet on his head. He said, you are a thief. Why? Because the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu are my property and you are trying to take them without my permission. So I'll give you a punishment. I sentence you to make a festival of the chip rice and you should feed all the devotees yogurt and flat rice. So then Raghunath Das he told those servants who were with him and they went to the marketplace and they acquired so much flat rice and yogurt and bananas and black pepper and camphor and uh, condensed milk and many preparations and they prepared them and offered to Sri Nityananda Prabhu and also kept one plate for Chaitanya Mahaprabhu though he was in Puri at that time. So Nityananda Prabhu he began to meditate upon the lotus feet of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And by the power of his devotion, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu appeared there. All could not see, but those who were very fortunate, especially Raghunath Das, he could see that Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came there and was dancing among the Vaishnavas. And very playfully, 
Nityananda Prabhu and Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, they were taking something from the plate of each Vaishnav and feeding each other. After some time, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu disappeared. Nityananda Prabhu told Raghunath Das then, Oh, only to bestow mercy upon you, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu has personally appeared here. Now you should re return to your home. But I give a blessing that very soon oh, all your obstacles and everything will be completely removed. And you will come into the association of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and he will give you uh, into the guidance of Sri Swarup Damodar Goswami. So feeling very much reassured by the words of Nityananda Prabhu, Raghunath Das returned home. Hmm? What is the significance of this? Raghunath Das had so much eagerness to be with Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, to be in Sadhu Sangha, to come out from the dark well of a, the materialistic household life. He had that determination, but he did not have the strength to do it. Many obstacles were there, but when one has the shelter and mercy of Sri Nityananda Prabhu, and Sri Nityananda Prabhu told him to get blessings of all Vaishnavas by serving them, feeding them a feast. So by the blessings of all Vaishnavas, and by the mercy of Nityananda Prabhu, that means Sri Guru, only then can all obstacles on the path of Bhakti be removed and the living entity can come out from the dark and perilous well of the household life and materialistic existence. So even though someone may be very determined to progress in Bhakti, by their own strength it is impossible. First they will have to get the mercy of Sri Guru and Vaishnavas. So Raghunath Das, he returned to his home. And once, in the very early morning, at that time, Raghunath Das, he was so renounced that even he, though he was staying at home, he did not sleep inside the house. But he was sleeping outside on the Durga Mandap. And he was resting there and always thinking, when will I meet with Chaitanya Mahaprabhu? When will I meet with him? At that time, in the very early morning, when the gods were sleeping, Yadunanda Acharya, his Diksha Guru, arrived there. He said, Oh, Raghunath Das, my Pujari has given up his, left his service. So I want you to go and speak with him and pers persuade him again to resume his service. So Raghunath Das, of course he agreed um, to, to the order of his Guru. And along with Yadunanda Acharya, he came out from the house in the very early morning. So he told his Gurudev, Oh Gurudev, there's no need for you to come along with me. I can go there and I will solve the problem and then I will return. So he gave his pranam to Yadunanda Acharya and Yadunanda Acharya returned to his ashram. Raghunath Das Goswami did his Guru Seva and then he realized, Oh, now is the golden opportunity. I came out of my house in the association of my Guru. No one will suspect anything. So if I will run away right now, no gods are there to catch me. And I will not go by the main roads because on the main roads I was caught many times before. But I will go through the villages and jungle and quickly go to Jagannath Puri. So feeling very grateful for the mercy of his Guru and Nityananda Prabhu, Raghunath Das Goswami ran and ran. And a journey which would take 30 days uh, ordinarily. He kept running day and night, not taking any rest, not taking anything to eat. After three days he lay down in the shed of a, of, of a cow shed. After a few days he took a little, uh, some chickpeas and milk. But only eating three times in 12 days. Very quickly he arrived in Jagannath Puri. When he arrived there in Jagannath Puri, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu was seated among his associates, Saurav Damada, Rai Ramananda, Govinda, Sarvabhoma Bhattacharya, and Haridas Thakur, and other very great exalted personalities. So when Raghunath Das came there, he fell down at the feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. And Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu picked him up and embraced him and saw how he was so lean and thin, so skinny, so much covered in dust and exhausted from his in very intense journey. What is this intense journey? This gives a lesson to us that Utsahat, enthusiasm, one should be very, very energetic to attain the shelter of the lotus feet of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. So when Mahaprabhu saw him, tears came in his eyes and with his own hands he began to dust off the body of Raghunath Das. He told him, Oh, you, by the mercy of Krishna, you have been delivered from the stinking drain of material existence. Hmm? Raghunath Das said, I don't know about Krishna's mercy. I only know that it is by your mercy I have come to the shelter of your lotus feet. Then Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, he was joking because he had a very 
uh, familiar relationship with the father and uncle Govardhan Majumda and Aranya Majumda, the father and uncle of Raghunath Das. So he said, oh your father and uncle, they are like worms in the ditch of stool. Mm -hmm. They are like worms in the ditch of stool. But luckily, oh you have come out from that situation. They are called Vaishnav Pray. Vaishnav Pray means they have some honor for Vaishnavas and they distribute for sadam and try to serve Vaishnavas. And they have some honor for the principles of bhakti. But actually, they are very much attached to their materialistic living. Yeah? They have no intention that they will leave everything and dedicate their body, mind and words and senses and heart completely in the process of Krishna Anushilanam, in Uttama Bhakti. <coughs> so at that now, Raghunath Das stayed among the associates of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu personally took his hand and put his hand in the hand of Swarup Damodar and told him, Oh, this Swarup Damodar, he knows more about Krishna Bhakti than me. So you should take instructions from him. And Raghunath Das began to reside in Puri, very close to the ashram of where Swarup Damodar was staying. After some time, time was going on. At first, Raghunath Das, for five or six days, he would come to where Mahaprabhu was staying and he would take the remnants of Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But after some time, he stopped coming there. Hmm? What was he doing? He would go to the Singhadwara, the door to the Jagannath temple, and he would sit there and he would stand, wait there begging. And he would wait for people to come and he would take something from them, whatever they would give. But after some time, he also gave up that. Hmm? And he was going to the uh, charity booth, that is the, called the Ananda Bazaar. And there, the, there was, they were giving uh, charity to those who needed Mahaprasadam. Why did he give up begging at the Singhadwar? He thought to himself, oh, this is the, like a profession of a prostitute. I sit here and I see, oh, this person came, they gave yesterday, surely they will give today. Oh, this person, he will not give. This person may give or not, oh, he will not give. And in this way, the mind is always speculating and not peaceful. So better that I go to the charity booth. But after some time, he even gave up going there. What was he doing? He would go to the where the drains would come out from the kitchen, and rice would wash out from the drains of the kitchen of the Jagannath temple. And there, cows would come and they would eat that rice. But the rice that the cows, even the cows would not take, which was rotten, he would come and he would take that, he would wash it a little bit, give some salt, and he would take that rice. And at the same time when he was taking, he would condemn himself. Hmm? He would say to himself, alas, fie on me. If my heart has actually been purified by transcendental knowledge, then why am I acting like a debauchee and trying to maintain this physical body? And condemning himself, he would take the most, uh, uh, least uh, uh, tasty things. When Mahaprabhu heard this, he became very eager to see this spectacle. So he went there and he saw. He said, Hey Raghunath Das, what are you doing? You're enjoying a feast, but not giving anything to me. Where is your good character? And he snatched some rice from the hand of Raghunath Das and <coughs> took it. Then Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I have tasted many delicious types of Jagannath Mahaprasadam, but I have never tasted anything so sweet as this. And he wanted to take more, but Swarup Damodar Swami caught his hand. He stopped him. He said, oh, this is not fit for you, and he took it away. Hmm. So, at that time, when Raghunath Das Goswami was in Puri, at first, his father was sending some money from his village, and he was accepting it and using it in the service of the Vaishnavas, feeding Chaitanya Mahaprabhu and other Vaishnavas. But after some time, he stopped doing that. Hmm. Mahaprabhu said, why? Swarup Damodar said, oh, he considered that it is not good to accept any money from his parents. Why? Because, oh, they are not engaged in pure bhakti. And Mahaprabhu confirmed this fact. This fact. Vishayir anakaile malin hayaman malin mana hoyle nahi krishna rasmaran. If uh, someone in this world, they want to do bhajan, but they will accept charity indiscriminately from persons who are not devoted to Krishna, then what will happen? By accepting food or by accept, accepting money hmm, and not giving this to their Gurudev but taking for themselves. What will happen? The mind will become contaminated by the consciousness of those materialistic persons. And 
Malin manahole nahi krishna rasmaran. If the mind is contaminated by accepting these things indiscriminately, then one cannot do smaran. One cannot engage in the steady meditation on the lotus feet, on the pastimes Nam Rup Gun and Lila of Shishi Radha and Krishna. So Raghunath Das Goswami, his renunciation was like lines in stone. He was very strictly renounced. Chaitanya Rabakta Gana Vairagya Pradhan Yahadeki Pritahaya Gaura Bhagavan. It is a very prominent feature among the devotees of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu that they are completely renounced from this world. And when Chaitanya Mahaprabhu sees their steady renunciation, his heart is deeply satisfied. So one day it happened that Raghunath Das, he requested Saurabh Damada to ask a question to Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. He was very, very humble. He would not go directly to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu. But through Saurabh Damada, he posed a question. So Saurabh Damada Goswami said to Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, Oh, Raghunath Das wants to know, now I have left all things in this world. What is my real duty? What should I do? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I have already given you to the guidance of Swarup Damodar. He is more qualified than me. But really, if you want to take some instruction from me, then listen very carefully to these words. He said, Gramya kata nashani be, Gramya vartana kahi be, Balona kahi be, Arab balona pari be. You should never speak about the mundane conversations of this world. Hmm? He said that she said that he said that she said that he did this and she did that. All these types of village talk, don't be involved in this. Don't speak and also don't listen to any of these things. Hmm? Don't eat very delicious food. And don't wear luxurious cloth. Hmm? So these are the prohibitions, things that should not be done. But what is the positive thing that should be accepted? Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, Amane nama nadahya, sada krishna nama labe, braje radha krishna seva, manasa koribe. Always be very meek and humble. Give respect to others, but don't expect that others should appreciate and respect to you. Hmm? In this state of mind, one should continuously chant Harinam. And while chanting, Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare. Hare Rama, Hare Rama. Brajit, Radha Krishna Seva, Manasa Kuribe. In the core of your heart, you should serve the lotus feet of Radha and Krishna. Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu said, I have given an outline of this process and all the details you can learn from Sri Swarup Damodar Goswami. So then, being very much under the guidance of Sri Swarup Damodar Goswami, Raghunath Das took shelter of this process of Raga Nuga Bhakti. Seva Sadaka Rupena Siddha Rupena Chatrahi. In what stage? Hmm? Not in the beginning stage. Not in the stage of Sadha. Oh, not even in the stage of Nishta. But now he come, Rati was coming. He was in a very high stage. And in this way, under the guidance of Sri Saurabh Damodar Goswami, he engaged in his Sadhan Bhajan. Thank you. So all the teaching of Rupa Goswami, we can see in Raghunath Das Goswami life what was unfavorable for Bhakti, very strongly rejected. What favorable, very strongly he accepted. Always chanting, remember, being in Gupta Vrindavan, in the Lord Street of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu there. He was in Puri until Mahaprabhu and others were there. After some time Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he entered in his Daprakat Lila. Saruk Damodar to Gadadhar Pandit to... Then he became restless. He wanted to give up his life. So he started from there to Vrindavan to sink in Jamuna River. He came, but he saw that no water so much. Then he went to Govardhan and he wanted to jump from the highest peak of Govardhan and to die. 
namely this Rupa and Sanatana, kept Prabhupada Das Goswami like his younger brother and son and Siksha disciple and told that by dying you cannot attain anything. Or same as me, I wanted to give my life, but Mahaprabhu told that only dying will not do, you will have to practice bhakti yoga really. And then they kept him in Radha Kunda and there his life was so high class of devotee. And there he composed so many uh, prayers. prayers, so many things, so many books there. And in his one of the books he has mentioned Manasiksha. Grau Gaste Gostadis, you should explain. You should try to follow. That is why we are giving you all these things. Very good. Om Agyana Timiranta Sajananjana Salakaya Chakchurun Militangena Tasmai Sri Gurave Namaha Bancha Kalpataru Pascha Kripas in the Pai Vacha Patitan and Pavane Bo, Vishnu Bo Namu Namaha. So, Sri Ragunathas Goswami, being under guidance of Sri Sanatan Goswami and Rupa Goswami, he lived in Radhakund. And Rupa Goswami and Sanatan Goswami treat him like he is their own younger brother or son. They have so much love and affection for him. Once Rupa Goswami composed one book and hand him over for hand him over for reading. He was full of separation. He could not tolerate. Das Goswami always weeping, weeping, weeping. It seems that he will give up his life. Seeing this, Rupa Goswami tried to take it back from him. But Das Goswami used to hold that book with his chest like his own life and soul. Somehow that he should not give it up. Rupa Goswami thought, oh, I have to arrange something. Then he wrote one book uh, full of hasaras. I told Raghunath, you can take this book and read it for due course. I have to make some correction the previous one. By this way, I took it off from him. And the second book was full of hasaras, reading and always laughing, laughing. I am giving one example which he has heard from Srila Gurudev. One Srimati Radhatakurani went to Kusum Sarovar along surrounded with her sokis to pick some flowers and they will make garland and give to Krishna. So Krishna knowing as, as before, he came and ride on the tree in Brahma Murtha and he pushed one branch down and Radhika was picking flower, when she absorbed with picking flower, then Krishna yeah. jumped from that branch and went to other jump. Immediate, similarly Radhika, like a spring, and went up. Then she told, Mari, Mari, I am dying, dying, send me, send me. Krishna came down from the tree immediate and embraced her. So, and also he seeing this fact, they began to laugh and clap. So Das Goswami is reading one after another pastimes and began to laugh and laugh. Then his separation mood went away by costless mercy of Rupa Goswami path. So being Radha Kund, he composed so many books, so many prayers. Like Stavavali, there are so many prayers, like Vilap Kusumanjali and others. So among one is talk, or prayer is Manasiksha, to teach our mind. In beginning of his Manasikcha, he composed one slok, Gurau Gosthe Gosthala Isu, Sujane Bhusura Gane, Sa Mantre Sri Namni, Brajanuga Jodanda Sarane, Sada Dhammam Hitwa Kurati Mapurvama Ditaram, Ae Santa Bhatas Chatuvi, Oviyachi Dhita Pada. 
Das Goswami is praying to his mind. Why? Mana eva manusanam karana vandha mokchaye. Our mind is the root of all evil. If mind is controlled, then you can advance in Krishna consciousness. If not so, being in association, you may think any bad thing. So, Das Goswami taught us to pray to mind, to control your mind, to do all these things. What thing? Guru. You have to increase your attachment, it means roti, to the lotus feet of Guru Pahat Padma. Why? Our ultimate goal is to attain Krishna Prem. But why does Goswami is telling Guru? Why not to Krishna at first? Because without the costless mercy of Sri Gurudev, none can attain Krishna Prem. Even Sri Gurudev and Bhagavan both are here. What we shall do? Guru Gobind Dono Thare Kake Lagu Pao Balihai Jai Gurudev Gobind Dio Vatai. Even Gurudev and Gop Bhagavan is there. We should do pranam to Gurudev first. And take his permis taking his permission, then you shall go to serve Krishna. Then Krishna will be pleased, otherwise he will never be pleased. If you bypass your Guru, they went to go to Krishna direct, he never accept any offerings from you. So you have to be very careful. So you have to respect Guru Dev first. So Das Goswami told Guru. After that, Goste. Goste means the Vrindavandham, where Brajavasis live. Goste means all Brajamandal. Guru Goste. Gosthalaisu. Gosthalaisu means who live in Gostha, means the inhabitant of Braj. They are Gosthalaisu. Like for Sukharas, Subal, Madhumangal, Arjun, Lavanga, Siddham, etc. For Vatsalaras, headed by Mother Jasoda and Nanda Baba and others, who is elderly gopi like, they have motherly affection and fatherly affection for Krishna, they are for Vatsalaras, for parental mood, and for Madhuras, Lolita, Visakha, Chitta, Champaklata, Indulekha, Tungo, Vidaranga, Devi, Sudevi, Chandavali, and Supermost, Simati Radha Thakurani. Gosthala Isu. Sujane. Sujane means who lives in Braj, but not in our Sampradaya, but other Sampradaya. But they live in Braj. They have some love for Krishna, respect for Krishna. You have to respect them also. By their good fortune, they are taking shelter of Brajadham. So respect them too. Bhusuragane. Bhusur means Brahmans. The Brahmans who lives in Braj, but they have not one pointed bhakti to Krishna, may be or may not be, but still if not you one pointed devotion for Krishna, still you have to respect them. Sujane Bhusuragane, Morabhar Samantre. Samantre means, Sam means own, own mantra. Which own mantra? Which is given by Gurudev mercifully? Like Brahma Gayatri, Guru Mantra Guru Gayatri, Gaur Mantra Gaur Gayatri, Krishna Mantra Kam Gayatri, Panchatatra Maha Mantra. We have to be increase our roti towards the mantra. Moreover, Sri Namni. Daily we will we will have to chant. We have to chant our Gayatri Mantras without any fail. Just like to maintain our body, we have to take our food stuff every day. If you not take, then you will be weak in the same way. If you not chant your Gayatri Mantras, then spiritually you will be weak. So if you want to attain Krishna Prem, want to advance in Krishna Consciousness, want to enter the realm of Krishna Bhajan, must have to chant your Mantras, which is given by Gurudev. Some Mantras Sri Namni, after that Harinam. So in Mantras so many things are there, why to chant Harinam again? So Phila Kaviraj Goswami has told, by Krishna Mantra, Krishna Mantra Haitya Ave Samsar Machan, Krishna Nam Haitya Ave Krishna In Charan. Only by chanting mantra, you can get relationship of Krishna, with Krishna. But you must have to chant Hari Nam every day. Like have to chant every day mantra, in same way have to chant your Hari Nam. Otherwise you could not increase your Krishna consciousness. Must have to chant. If Harinam will give you Prem, 
दो गोपाल मंत्रण कामगार तीस बारी एक पावरफुल स्टील या पिचान भगवत नाम कई हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे इन ब्रज व्हाट ब्रज वासी सर डूइंग दे आर डूइंग दर ऑल हाउस ऑल एक्टिविटी आज व्हाट डूइंग गोविंद दामो दरमा धोबेची गोविंद दामो दरमा धोबेची जेलर ने माथा रोड गोपी स्वर्ण दे आर डूइंग उत्थाय गोपो परारत्र भागे स्मृताय सुदा सुतबाल केली जन गायत्री उच्चाई जनितानुरागा गोविंद दामो दरमाधो बेची गोविंद दामो दरमाधो बेची गोविंद दामो दरमाधो बेची जब डूइंग कृष्ण नेम इन ईच एंड एवरी नेम इन द सम पार्टिकुलर पास्ट टाइम इफ वी पे एवरी डे देन दैट पास्ट टाइम विल मार्शिफुली मैनिफेस्ट इन आवर हार्ट so das gosam is telling sri namni and silo sachidananda bhakti thakur has told in his instruction you can do your all services by your hand and same time you have to chant <coughs> holy name then one day must holy name and his past time will manifest in your heart so you have to do this samante sri namni moreover braja nuga jivadanda sarane and you have to increase your attachment towards divine couple of braj bhajan bhajan sada dhamma hitva kuroti you have to give up your all false ego oh i am so big person i am president of this country i am managing director of this company i am so learned scholar I have to give up all this false ego material position and name and fame giving up all this thing we have to increase our attachment towards all these things that one day we can enter in krishna realm and being under guidance of gurudev then we can serve sri chaitanya mahaprabhu and divine couple simultaneously hari krishna bansha kalpataru bhakta kripa sindhu bhai vacha kavita nam pavane bho ushade this is the essence of all the teaching you should not neglect whether grihastha or brahmachari no difference of bhakti in women and or grihastha and tyag so you should try to follow <coughs> chant name what prabhunath das sagar goswami has told in the process that rup goswami rup goswami also he was the Uh, private private secretary of a muslim king very rich person very learned a scholar in law but he left it for chaitanya mahap and he went to vrindavan to meet and after that chaitanya mahaprabhu came in puri again he came here and then mahaprabhu instructed so many things in baradas them prayagita and inspired all his power that he knew the mood of heart of chaitanya mahap and he began to compose oh vaishnav literature like oh bhakti rasamrita sahib ujjwala niyam no no lalit madhav vidanta madhav and for definitions he made bhakti asami sindhu and ujjwal in bani alankar kastu when so many books and prayers it has Stavamala. been collected in stavamala sidas rupam jeevo